Okay, let's get going. Pull the throttle out so it can't select any gears and put a little bit of throttle on. Go make sure that the ignition's switched on so I turn it on. No lights come on so I need to turn the battery on. Click the battery on, lights are on, press the button. Hopefully she starts. Light should go out and you're ready to rock and roll. Set the throttle where you want it to be so she can warm up happily and check the water's pumping out the exhaust. Ready to go. Casting off, I let the stern go so it can drift out first. Get down to that bow line and get her on quickly before my stern starts drifting out. I actually want the stern to be a little bit further out and that's why I've let the stern line off first. It helps me go backwards a little bit. But it's a big gap to step if I let it go too far so I have to give a little tug in before I step on. Into neutral, helm over to port and pile some revs on. All this is just so she can get a little bit of a way on in a stern. When we say a way, it means motion through the water or movement through the water inertia within the hull. And this is so the rudder can have a bite and make some control over the boat. You won't get any control from a rudder if there's no way on the boat. I now select forward gear and push the helm over to the starboard side. This doesn't make the boat go forward, it keeps the boat turning. The reverse way keeps the boat going backwards for a bit and the wash now being forced against the rudder by putting it in forward creates the turning motion required to spin the boat on the spot. Once the way is lost, the boat will start moving forward and hopefully that's where you want it to be pointing at the time. You can use this manoeuvre forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards in about one and a half times your boat length and you can turn it 360 but it'll have a chosen direction which way it wants to go, either anti-clockwise or clockwise, depending on your prop design and which way it flushes the water. You have to call up Marina Control to enter and depart the Gangway Marina, which is good because you know that it's going to be clear when you're departing and clear when you're arriving. As soon as you're outside the marina, there's plenty of river to sort yourself out for when you get out the estuary. Travelling up to the perch gives you plenty of time to get your sails up. Although there's quite a tide coming in against me at this particular moment in time, so I'm motor sailing along. Bucking the tide with my sails and with the engine is motor sailing. The sooner I can get out of this main flood, the better, and let these sails do what they do best. So I'm going to take a shortcut over the banks, rather than follow the voyage round. As I get out of the main flood over the banks, I go just two sails. She slows down to 1.6 through the water, 1.7 through the water, and she's doing two and a half over the ground. Well, something's wrong there. I'm punching into it. So that obviously means I'm doing more than my through the water speed indicates at this particular moment in time. That is definite. If you're punching into something and doing two and a half knots over the ground, you've got to be exceeding that to be doing it. So my 1.6, 1.7's pants. As we clear the bank, Swallow starts to pick a bit more pace up, a bit more sensible. We're still pushing tide, but now we're making a sensible pace. So I think it's time for, um, yeah, you guessed it, a brew. That's Puffin Island in the distance there. We're only just really leaving the banks of Conway at the moment. The air is very gentle. It's lovely and warm out today. And we've got a slight sea. And we're heading um, north, north, west. And everything's in our favour at this moment in time, except the tide. The tide's due to turn in our favour in about two hours. And then it'll give us our helping hand that we require. We're going to go anti-clockwise around um, Anglesey. From Conway to Hollyhead is the lion's share of the trip. But it's also where we get the most help from the tide. So it's the easiest part to do. Looking back, it's Conway Mountains behind us and that on the left hand side of the screen is the Great Hall. And if I spin round a little bit, there's my brother, Jay, on Tarka. The airs are quite light today and they're an easterly, which is normally my uncommon wind in my area. 
We're normally a southwesterly prevailing winds, but this year definitely has been an easterly prevailing wind. So it sort of gives us new ways to sail the same areas that we normally sail, and different ways of looking at them. Anyway, it means that I'm going to have a following wind right round to Hollyhead with a little bit of luck. Wind on the starboard beam at the moment, and the wind vane's sitting in clean air, so it's given us a nice steady path. It's nice and quiet on board, and it's sit back and enjoy the journey time. My brother, just over the way there, he's normally disappeared by now, and I don't normally see him again. But he's hanging around, I think, for me, one way or another. Or just wants to do the sail with me, instead of ahead of me. Just passing Puffin Island now. So that's first seven miles out the way. I find it on really quiet days, whilst you're slipping along like this, the water becomes mesmerising. Another one of those things about sailing that sends me in sort of a trance. Pick my head up and pay some attention to where we're going. The hills you can see start at about Penman Point, which is by Puff and Sound, and they go up to Red Wolf Bay, which would be on the right of the screen at the top. Not, you just can't see the bay at the moment, that's all. The flood that's against us is now beginning to ease off, and I'm getting my hull speed sorted through the water, which is how I look to get about five knots, as you well know. That's the opening there to Red Wolf Bay, should you be going in. Now that we're passing all the major ship and anchored, we're coming up towards um, Point Linus. That's uh, if one of the corners or one of the places where the tide sort of speeds up a little bit, and as it's just started going in our favour, we'll get a bit of a lift as we go round this corner. Here's Point Linus coming up ahead of us. That's the lighthouse on the top you can just see in the distance, if I can keep my hands still. Looks like Dawn Waters has come over to say hello. I th think this is a Northwest Ventures boat. I can just about see the Bergey flying. It's quite a large saddler and moving quite quickly through the water. He appears to have a reef in his mainsail. I'm sure he's got a good reason for it. He's with another three boats which are all just ahead of him there against the hills. That's him now in the distance. I'm going to go straight on, but it looks like they're making land. We're heading through that little gap in between the offline rock and the mainland. That's called Middle Mouse. This is our position now, heading west across the top of Anglesey, through the small gap between the mainland and the mouse. When I say a small gap, it's over 500 metres, probably over 600 metres, but not much more than that. The light at this particular angle, crossing my sail with the sun, leaves a fairy looking edge. I don't know whether there's a fairy edge really there, but look, it's fluffy looking. I don't know what that's all about, I'll probably have to check it and I'll probably find all the stitches hanging out of it. Won't be a good thing, I'm sure. The wind vane's doing a cracking job carrying us round, however the wind is starting to get lighter now, so I'll see how it fares in a bit. I don't seem to be paying a lot of attention to what's going on around me at the moment. Making cups of tea and chilling and what have you. The water here is a little slight and um, it's moving along underneath the boat quite quickly in the direction that we're going. As it builds up, we get free speed over the ground. Because the airs are light, the only thing I'm concerned about now is that I keep steerage. The water along the top of here, mid-flow, can get up to about five knots, and that's plenty of speed with or without sails. This small island that they call Middle Mouse, um, it's like a ship ploughing its way through the sea up here. It's not going anywhere, but it leaves a wake similar to what a large boat would do in the water behind it, to show that it's actually moving quite quickly through the water. It probably gets up to speeds around five knots when it's going as fast as it can and the water's boiling all behind it. Well that looks like the Venturers have dropped their anchors in uh, Camais Bay is it? This 
will the power station sticks out just after cam eyes. Nice, pretty sight. The air is starting to get really light now. The sails are getting a bit flappy. I'm still steering okay. The wind vane's still got a grip. But I don't think it can last much longer. The water moving quickly underneath me is causing the surface to boil a little. But there's no wind on it. It's just lumpy water. That's now West Mouse ahead of us. With the pawn off a game of chess on top of it. I reckon the giants are missing one off the board. The water can run quite fast round here. And like I've told you before, wind over tide's not where you want to be when water's running fast. But there's no wind, but there's plenty of tide, so we're all right. Well, there's a little wind, but it's in the direction of the current, and that helps settle it. I'm doing two knots through the water, but have a look at the speed over the ground. It's a little bit higher than two knots, and that's the current. And you don't want to see that current ever against you, because you won't be going anywhere. After rounding Carmel Ed, I stay out and make use of the ebb. My brother looks like he's got himself caught in a back eddy, and it looks like he's going backwards. On the zoom, you can see Hollyhead there in the distance. You can see a nice bright white ferry. Easy to see a nice bright white ferry. That's Holly Island. And it's a big lump. It's got the stacks on it. Up the mainland here. To Carmel Head, which is the end of the mainland, which is the corner. And there's my brother. Just after the head. There's the head. And then we have the Skerries. A lovely anchorage for a peaceful day. Well, there he is. I think he's picking a line to come out towards me now to get in the current. Obviously doesn't like the fact that I've picked up a better line. Well, with Hollyhead looming in the distance... And calm waters, I've dropped the main. It was shielding the um, foresail, so I'd rather just go in on the foresail. So I've dropped the main out the way. And um, I'm putting my fenders on now. Ideal time. Bit of peaceful time to do it. I don't know what side I'm going to fender up, so I'm just going to put a few fenders out on both sides of the boat. And then when I get in, I can have a bit more chance to sort myself out at a more leisurely pace. You're supposed to call in to Hollyhead and asked them for permission to come into the port. Well, my brother's already done it and said that we're clear. So that's okay. Saves me a job. The rock you can see on my starboard, which is right at the screen, is Holly Island. On the end of Holly Island, you've got a couple of lighthouses, a bit of land that stick out. They call them North and South Stack. There can be um, overfalls around that area if you're not careful, so that's another place that you have to time round here. Almost ahead of me there on the starboard now, you can see it clearly just under the foot of the sail, is the um, end of the breakwater wall, and that is a long, big breakwater wall. Can you see the other end in the distance all the way down there? What a wall, what a wall. Well, as you start to creep up and maybe gain a little bit of entrance into the um, harbour as it is, or the protection of the wall, which is the harbour. You can see the uh, starboard side of this harbour is going to be the small craft side and the port side where you can see the ship just on my port bow. That's going to be the working side of it. So once you get to the wall, you need to stay with the wall. So just keep it, you know, 40 metres, 50 metres on your starboard side and make your way down the wall. There is, on the corner, a small um, green can to watch out for. I dare say that's to protect you from some overspill of rocks by the end of the wall. And the other thing to look out for is lobster pots. You will get them around the wall as well, and you don't want them around your prop. Well, this is my position on the chart at the moment, as you can see, just entering just at the beginning of the harbour. We need to go down halfway across this wall and take a turn to starboard, and then that'll take us to where the moorings are. Most of them are swinging moorings. This shows a marina, but unfortunately the marina has all but gone. Storm Emma gave the marina a right good battering, and there were nothing left when it finished. I bet you that brought a tear to a few eyes. You would have hated to have heard this on the news. If you had your pride and joy, Doctor, it would have been one of those moments the heart sunk. 
along with the boat. Well, that's all history now. And this is another day and it's sunshiny. And here we are coming in and just ahead of me on the starboard bow, you can just about make that little green can out. That sits at the end of the wall. In bad weather, you'd be made up when you got to here to have the protection of that huge breakwater wall. Well, it really has been a lovely day. We've had fair winds, blue skies, slight seas, and plenty of speed over ground. Don't think you could ask for more than that. We've made it in plenty of time. It's still dry, the sun's still up. And as you can see, there's all the boats on the moorings in the distance where we're heading. The wind's getting a little bit fluky behind this wall and I think it might be time to be putting the sail away and maybe getting that engine on to go the last couple of yards. And little to my knowledge, just as this sail fills up with air and it starts to push the bow around a little bit, my brother's decided to overtake me and my bow turns towards him. That's giving him a shock. Well, motoring down the last couple of yards now, put the sail away. It were too fluky, couldn't keep up with that. Let's get into these moorings. My brother on Tarka finds a space on the pontoon and I tie up next to him. That's the clubhouse for the sailing club. A bit leery, but it's the clubhouse. Comfortably moored for the night now. Need to get some food on the go and then maybe crack open a couple of tinnies, eh? This pontoon's about all that's left of the marina. This was the main pontoon of the marina and those boats on the inside are where the moorings would have been. There's plans that this place will be resurrected at some point, but I don't know when. And I don't know by whom. Just keep my fingers crossed it will be again. That's all that matters. Well, I'll see you all again on the next leg of going round Anglesey. Coming shortly, no doubt. Keep your eye out for it. Bye for now.